Errol Morris, it's good to welcome you back to Dallas. It's been a while since we've had a chance to sit and talk, but uh, now here you are with the standard operating procedure all about Abu Ghraib and what all about Abu Ghraib and what happened there. It's been on the back burner for a while, it seems to me, as far as the news is concerned. But uh, in, in your investigations and all, where does Abu Ghraib stand now? Well, my views about Abu Ghraib were turned 180 degrees around. Like almost everyone else, I had my own views about those photographs when they came out. Uh, I was curious, however, why hasn't anyone talked to the people who took the photographs? Uh, do we really know what we're looking at when we look at one of these photographs? I wanted to understand them better, and I felt that there was a hidden story, if you like, behind the photographs. And so I made this movie. Photographs that have been seen by more people than any other photographs in history, yet we know so very little about them. Uh, no, it's uh, an important story. It's not a story that's just going to vanish. Maybe people um, imagine that all of this will go away, that the Iraq war will disappear, but Unfortunately, all of this is real and is very, very, very important, I believe, to our country. Very, very important that we deal with this. Uh, I think that th this whole story is a story about a miscarriage of justice, perhaps as powerful and as important as the Thin Blue Line which brought me to Dallas some 20 years ago when we first met, when we first talked about my movies. Uh, so I'm back again with another miscarriage of justice story. The location itself, what's going on there today? It was turned over to the Iraqis. Uh, I hear all kinds of different stories about Abu Ghraib, but my story, of course, is very, very specific period of time, uh, the fall of 2003, when all of these photographs were taken. And I tried to confine myself. It's too big a story uh, to uh, take in too many people, too much time. Uh, I wanted to focus. I think that's the correct word here. I wanted to focus on the photographs and to try to understand them better, and to understand the people who took them and the people who were blamed for taking them. We all f look at them as monsters, villains, every sense of the word. Of course, one of the things that I discovered is that they're not monsters at all. They're people like you and me. And they were dealing with a set of moral and ethical issues that, thank God, I don't have to deal with on a daily basis. As I watched the movie, Errol, I kept wondering why and how these cameras were permitted, much less being used. What's, what's your explanation for that? Uh, here's an amazing story for you. There were concession stands at Abu Ghraib. And one of the things that they sold was what? Cameras. <laughs> you could buy cameras at Abu Ghraib. People were taking pictures all over the place. The officers as well as the enlisted people? I really don't know. But I do know in the case of these particular photographs, they were taken for all kinds of reasons, trophy uh, photographs. Um, but in many instances, they were taken because the soldiers themselves were appalled by what they saw and by what they were being asked to do. And they took these pictures because they wanted evidence. They thought 
that they were providing evidence against what was going on in Abu Ghraib. Not in every instance, but in many instances. But it, instead, the photographs were used to send them to prison. Is there still more to be told even beyond what your movie de deals with? You betcha. Because my movie is just this story around the photographs. There's something weird about photography. We have a pile of photographs in front of us, and we think, well, I see everything. I see the photographs. That's it. But of course, we don't see what hasn't been photographed. We don't see what's outside those frames. Uh, and we may not even understand the nature of what we're looking at in a photograph. Um, there's a huge story here. And it's a story of chaos. I would call it bedlam. A huge prison of close to 10,000 prisoners uh, in a state of chaos. Policies that have relaxed rules of interrogation to such extent that anything is possible. The photos, of course, are real photos. But didn't you have to recreate a, a, quite a lot of the action? Uh, I describe making movies uh, I don't know if this is a good or bad description. Baking a cake. You have your ingredients in front of you and you put it together in the best way you possibly can. I had the photographs. I had letters written by Sabrina Harmon. These are amazing letters. I feel very lucky to have stumbled on them. She's writing letters to her girlfriend back in the United States at the same time that she's taking these photographs. And so we have a glimpse inside of her head. We have a glimpse into what she's thinking. We have a glimpse into her motivation for all of this. Very, very powerful. Um, then I have my interviews, my retrospective accounts, people reckoning with their own memories of what happened of the past. Uh, reenactments, if you like, in words of their past experience. And then I have images, illustrations that I have created, many of them with ultra slow motion. I used a very special camera for the first time in this movie. Um, I think it's a very handsome looking movie. I think of all of the movies that I've made, it's perhaps the most handsomely crafted. I'm very proud of it as a movie. And I'm also very proud of the investigation that went on behind the movie, the investigation that made the movie possible. It's a little bit like the Thin Blue Line in that regard. I, I wanted to have my cake and eat it too. I wanted to make a movie that answered to certain interests I had as a filmmaker. And I wanted to make a movie that really was a great investigation, a great uh, attempt to deal with facts and evidence in a new way. And I hope, I hope I've done it again. We shall see. You have the still photos. I, I guess hundreds and hundreds of those. Thousands of them. Thousands. Was there any motion picture made? Yes, you see it in the movie. There were uh, motion pictures made with uh, cell phone cameras. They're in the movie. But some of the live action, did you actually have to get actors and, and yes. recre re recreate that? Yes, absolutely. Is any of this torture type stuff that we see in Abu Ghraib, is any of that going on still today? Uh, my guess is yes. We haven't changed the policies. We haven't learned any lessons from this. Uh, one of the most frightening things about this story is that the wrong people have been punished, the right people have never been held accountable. Why should there be any change? Um, I mean, I'm amazed at the effect that the Thin Blue Line had. Uh, uh, when I was puttering around in Dallas in 1987, 
and I stumbled on this miscarriage of justice. I wasn't even looking for miscarriages of justice. I just happened to become obsessed with this story, and I wanted to follow it through. But look what's happened in the years following. Uh, I might have been the first person to find a miscarriage of justice here, but how many cases have there been of faulty convictions? Uh, not just in Texas, but around the country. Uh, I like to think, I hope I'm right, uh, I'm as fallible as the next guy, I hope I'm right that I've uncovered something very disturbing here, something that tells us that a story we all thought we knew, we don't know, and that we have to look at it again. Do you fear repercussions, or have you had any repercussions? Um, I haven't had any repercussions. Threats? Threats. You know, I got death threats at the time of the Thin Blue Line. That hasn't happened this time around, and I'm deeply grateful. Well, again, I thank you very much for coming to Dallas. It's, a, it's just a remarkable film. Thank you. Extremely disturbing. I'm sure everybody says the same thing to you, extremely disturbing. But um, I'm a better person for having seen it. I'm a better informed person for having seen it. Well, thanks for saying that. And it's my pleasure to talk to you again and to be back in Dallas. I like this city very, very much. I've spent a lot of time here. The door I, is always open. Thank you. I always like coming back. <laughs> thank uh, you, Errol. Thank you so much. A hundred questions in your time. It's not like uh, James uh, Lipman on the the actor studio you know, where he has a stack of questions like so. Okay, uh, you ready? Yes, ma'am. All right. What is happening at Abu Ghraib today? Uh, it's been turned over to the Iraqis. That's right. Is our military still doing these torturous things that we see in your movie? Uh, the simple answer is yes. Uh, the people who are responsible for these policies have never been held to account. What happened at Abu Ghraib? Did that produce any results? Uh, no. No, it didn't. No useful intelligence came out of Abu Ghraib. You leave it open-ended in a way as far as conclusion. You leave it at the end of the movie where we make our own conclusions, but what are your conclusions about this? Uh, that these guys got framed, that the people responsible walked away and have never been held accountable. It makes me angry as an American. I, uh, I like to think that this country is built on law and on justice and fairness. And I don't see law, I don't see justice, and I don't see fairness in this story. And that is upsetting to me. Do you ever have repercussions or have you had threats? Not yet this time around. <laughs> I've been lucky. You have thousands and thousands of photos, but did you have any motion pictures? Yes, they're uh, actual cell phone moving pictures. They're in the movie. They're very tiny. They're very small, and I put them in the middle of the frame, but they're in there, yes. You, you surely had to recreate those, some of the live action, didn't you? I try to, to create illustrations of ideas and certain small details and images. That's always important to me. Okay. Um, let me recall this one line. It's not a question. Um, officers as well as enlisted men, and I'll turn it around. Uh, uh, no, that's fine. You don't need to answer. 
enlisted men as well as officers? Yes. Um, okay. Is there more to be told beyond what we see in your movie? We really haven't seen the story yet. There's a gigantic story there that still has not been told. Okay, it should do it. Okay. Thank you.